foreign embassies in Pyongyang are staying put for now, despite warnings from the regime there to evacuate. The North Korean government says it can't guarantee the safety of diplomatic enclaves, citing tensions and the threat of war. The North has primed at least two ballistic missiles in response to U.S. and South Korean warship encroachment. Let's get some more perspective on the standoff now with a geopolitical analyst at 21stCenturyWire.com. Uh, Patrick Henningsen uh, joining us live here on RT. Good to see you today. Do you think, um, do you take any uh, stock or any substance to the embassy warning or is this just a bit more hype? Yes, it is a very real danger for the embassies in North Korea, as, as is a danger for South Korea and the countries around. The big question is how this hyped up at the beginning had to do with is the nuclear threat from North Korea. And there's a series of things that have gone on in the last months to get us to that conclusion. And I can't help but remember in the run-up to the Iraq war, everyone was asking, would Saddam Hussein use chemical weapons or not? But no one actually asked the question, does he really have them in the first place? And the same question I've just asked regarding North Korea, what is their nuclear threat? And as far as I can see, and as far as U.S. officials' actual admissions are, there is no, uh, no nuclear threat, as we can say, interballistic missile threat to the United States. So this is uh, very much overhyped in a Cold War theatrical sense. All right, Patrick, let's, uh, let's engage uh, what's going on right now. I understand uh, South Korea has uh, sent missile cruisers to the north's borders, uh, while a U.S. armada is cozying up on the coast as well. And any chance do you think that could persuade Pyongyang to stand down? It's a very interesting situation we have here. As you know, North Korea, the kind of state propaganda that they release within their own country for their domestic use is actually being validated by Washington, D.C.'s reaction. In other words, the B-2 stealth flyovers, the F-22 exercises, the destroyer parked off the coast of South Korea. This is validating North Korean propaganda, and it's a perfect storm for some sort of a staged international conflict. Whether it will go hot is another matter, but there's a lot of other things that have happened around this. North Korea is uh, threatened to restart its nuclear reactor, and I think that has more to do with these events uh, than people realize. It has a lot more to do with the actual production of nuclear power as the same case with Iran. That's why these countries are acts of evil. Well, indeed, I mean, certainly uh, there are Western powers out there that do like to throw North Korea and Iran into the same box as well. But uh, if, if I can for a moment here, for years, uh, the former leader Kim Jong-il, he saber-rattled and usually Washington stepped in with some sort of a carrot stick maneuver. This time, though, under King, Kim Jong-un, it seems Pyongyang has actually turned its usual method up a few notches. They have, but, you know, you have to look at this, Rory, in the context, in the context of what's going on geopolitically. The, the pivot, you know, the threat from North Korea might be overhyped, but the pivot towards Asia from the United States is very real, okay? Right now, since this crisis began, the Philippines has already okayed the use of more bases for the United States in that country. And there was a deal to decommission some of the Okinawa uh, sites in Japan, and that might be off the table as a result of the hype of this particular conflict. So, you know, you see the military industrial complex needs a reason to exist. And I believe the North Korean threat, be it theatrical or real, uh, gives us that reason, gives the pretext for the, the expansion of the military economy from the U.S. side. All right, Patrick Henderson, a geopolitical analyst from 21stCenturyWire.com. A great pleasure to have you on RT this Saturday. Thank you.